much saliva? Or is it just when you're on the air? You always had that cocky, loudmouth thing going for you. I'm gonna enjoy this. Time for the Christmas Show! Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we take a look at the very first game developed by Adventure Specialist Game Studio, Don't Nod Entertainment with Remember Me. Originally in development as a Sony PlayStation 3 exclusive as a new role-playing game, Sony had to cut ties due to funding at the time. Luckily, after presenting their vision at Gamescom, Capcom acquired the rights, but changed the game into an action-adventure title instead. The game would have a cyberpunk theme, and the look is what truly attracted me to the title at the time when I purchased the game for my Xbox 360. Although I wanted to play the game dearly, I got lost in the ear playing other releases like Max Payne 3 and watching my friends play the original critically acclaimed Last of Us on the PlayStation 3. In the end, the game was always something I wanted to return to, but pretty much became part of my library and I would never touch it until now. With the hype of new next-gen patch for the Cyberpunk 2077 for the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5, I noticed more older Cyberpunk themed games on sale and brought back into light like Remember Me and now I will give the time and my full attention to the game. Unfortunately, not backwards compatible on the Series X, I'm out of luck with playing it from just my Xbox 360 copy. But playing on my PC with Steam is just what the doctor ordered with its super cheap deals. Now I can enjoy the game and the way the developers intended with 4K at 60 frames per second at the highest settings. So let's go. Remember Me was developed by Don't Nod Entertainment and released by Capcom in 2013 for the PC, PlayStation 3, and the Xbox 360. The game is a single player action adventure game that focuses on underground resistance against a mega corporation, Memorize. With the main character Nilin, a memory hunter, the resistance wants you to bring down Memorize. The absolute best part of the game is the story. You play as Dylan as you find more and more secrets about yourself as you progress through the game, taking on main executives and major players in Memorize. You will also f have a friend in your ear named Edge. As you get stronger and stronger, Dylan becomes the most fiercest fighting memory hunter physically and mentally around. The visuals here are fantastic, depicting Neo Paris in a cyberpunk themed world. There are parts where it's absolutely clean and others are dumps of the world, but each are in a, is very beautifully crafted and a wonder to behold when you take on the time to look. The main characters look very detailed and clean and the polish of its designs shine through the game from beginning to end. Behold the privileged few, safe with their little comforts, while others live in suffering, a few meters from their barricade. No one chooses which side of the firewall to grow up on. The worst part of the game, and I mean the worst, is the combat. Looking into what the game started out as, I wish it was an RPG to begin with, 
to see how the storytelling and its pacing would be. I can say this, the pedigree of action adventure games like Don't Not Has from Life is Strange to tell me why I bet the story would flow that much better if given a chance. The combat allows players to string their own attacks and combos in making wonderful combinations in fight sequences but falls short as it becomes too powerful at times. Once you realize how to recover life by fighting, you dodge, attack, recover, and repeat over and over again. You basically give up and rely on certain patterns to get you through the story to see what's next. Platforming is fun as you climb through the city, but becomes an exercise when the game tells you where to jump and takes the skill out of it. I do hate climbing sequences at times, but when done right, like the Tomb Raider reboot, it can take it can be very fun and be worthwhile. Just not here in Remember Me. Another aspect in Nilan's ability is to change memories, which is actually, to me, super creepy. It is a fun aspect, but doesn't have enough throughout the game to make it something to look forward to, and maybe that's okay too. As an example, early on in the game, you face a bounty hunter who only is taking the job of hunting you to make enough money to save her husband. You eventually change her memory to want vengeance on Memorize for allowing her husband to die with the memory Nilan changes herself. How is this possible? You take my eyes! <laughs> no! Degenerate, die! Honestly, that's not cool at all, but part of the game has you progress and change memories like it's nothing. Even the instant cool looking kill moves look bad as it deals with the enemy's mind. I like beating up bad guys like the next person, but I feel a bit different. Destroying their minds, making sure they don't come back is somewhat disturbing. No, wait, we can talk. I can give you a whole other- Overall, you do play this game for the story here itself, as the combat could be more refined, and the cool yet creepy memory changes are far and few in between. Remember Me gets a 7.0 out of 10 for a wonderful story with fantastic visuals is wasted by just okay combat that you trudge through to get from point A to point B just to know what happens next. That's it for me on this look at Remember Me. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg, take us out of here and I will see you all in the next upload. The name is Millen. This time, you'll remember me. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh.